Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Angelo Pinto. I'm one of four co-founders of Until Freedom, along with Tamika Mallory, Maison Lennon, and Linda Sarsour. We are joined today in partnering, of course, with Revolt and Revolt Black News to bring you a special program around the state of Black America and the state of emergency. So you're gonna hear from Tamika Mallory, who's gonna give us a, an address shortly. I also now wanna turn things over to our fabulous co-host of the day, Willow Smith. Willow, thank you for being here. How are you? I'm so good. Thank you, Angelo. Um, I just wanna start off by saying uh, thank you, Revolt TV and Until Freedom for having me. Um, you know, we're, we're beginning a new administration in Washington, as we all know, and I personally think it's so important for us as a community to use our autonomy to strategize and push for systematic change. So it is my pleasure to introduce Tamika D. Mallory, one of our generation's most powerful voices and one of my personal inspirations. Um, she's also the co-founder of Until Freedom, like, like you addressed, um, the author of State of Emergency. Um, she's gonna be joining us live from Louisville, Kentucky, where she and Until Freedom have been working so tirelessly to fight for justice for Breonna Taylor. She has so much to share with us, uh, so please, please give her your undivided attention. Um, without further ado, Tamika Mallory. If when you look around, you only see people who look like you, it is not a movement that is intersectional that seeks to touch the lives of all people. When folks come and say, how do I become an activist? How do I get involved? It's not enough to study it and think you know it. Mm -hmm. You have to actually allow the people who've experienced it to speak first. Yeah. As a woman, I realize that we come in and fix everything. But that's just the nature of who we are. If you're a black woman, you are literally fixing everything for everybody all the time. The woman has to be at the forefront of that conversation because we are ultimately carrying the weight of the struggle on our backs. The police officers responsible for killing Breonna Taylor must be arrested in order for the community to feel calm. Tamika Palmer understands that she did not just get a call because her daughter was killed. She got a call to stand and fight for justice. That Breonna Taylor will now be used as a catalyst for a movement that will change the conditions for Black people in America and for Black women in America. You know, there's no one to go to to say, look at how the police department is treating us. So the next step is capitalism. You have to shut their money down because that's the only other thing that they pay attention to. So once you, Starbucks, Waffle House, all these people, when their pockets are hurting, they begin to apply, apply pressure for you on the government officials to say, yo, we having a problem, the Negroes is outraged. Feel you deep down in my bones and in my soul. And I know that many of you heard a battle cry. You didn't know if I was okay. So you came, and you called, and you text, and you tweeted. Let me tell you and make sure that you understand who I am. No matter what they say, no matter what they write, I will not bend. My back is up straight. I will not bow. I will not break. I am who I am for over 20 years, and no media outlet and no one else will tell you, I'm telling you, I love all people, and no one will define for me who I am. Only I can do that. Daniel Cameron is no different than the sellout Negroes that sold our people into slavery and helped white men to capture our people, to abuse them, and to traffic them while our women were raped, while our men were raped by savages. That is who you are, Daniel Karen. You are a coward, you are a sellout, and you were used by the system to harm your own mama, your own black mama. We have no respect for you. Charge the cops. Do your job. This is a coordinated activity happening across this nation. And so we are in a state of emergency. Black people are dying in a state of emergency. Good evening. This week, as we have celebrated the week of love, 
the week of black love. It is only fitting that Until Freedom, the social justice organization that I co-founded along with three other incredible individuals, Linda Sarsour, my son Lennon, and attorney Angelo Pinto, have launched what we are calling the I Love Freedom Campaign. The purpose of this campaign is to bring direct urgent attention to the need for radical changes in the ways in which our country operates. We need to have a serious conversation about the oppression that our government puts people of color through. This week, we also recognize the 46th presidents of the United States, the most powerful place in the universe. We call this the land of the free. But the question that we are constantly grappling with is free for whom? We watched last week just how corrupt, immoral, and unjust our country is when a man can be impeached for literally staging a war against America on our soil as the president and yet he evades conviction because this country does not know true accountability for white men. I dare not say his name today, but the acquittal of number 45 is a continuum of the running theme that you can conspire to murder, if not murder directly, attempt to steal, if not commit actual theft, lie and cause extreme harm, but if you fit into a larger goal of maintaining control and upholding white supremacy, the behavior is rewarded rather than checked. Even when it happens live on TV, America only knows accountability for black, brown, and poor people. And so we find ourselves in a very peculiar place. So much remains the same. I would even argue that the situation is worse because we have so many resources and we have been able to accomplish so much and yet we are still fighting for basic human rights. As much as we have won, the struggles that we have been through, as much as we have shifted this nation, we have not shifted it to a place that black people feel free. How do we reconcile the two? How do we reconcile that just this Black History Month, we started out watching a nine-year-old girl being pepper sprayed and handcuffed by Rochester, New York police? There. I got her. I got her. I got her. I got her. Two female students were abused while in school. The cops responsible for shooting and paralyzing Jacob Blake were not charged. Kyle Rittenhouse was released and upon a judge learning of the violation of his bail agreement, the judge said it was okay and allowed him to go home to continue to be free. Never for a black man. And in a more comical fashion, yet deeply troubling news, is that one man arrested for his involvement in the insurrection was moved to another jail to accommodate his organic food needs. And another woman was able to say that she wanted to go on vacation after being arrested for her role on January 6th, and the judge allowed her to do so. The cops are killing us. Poverty is killing us. COVID-19 is killing us and we are killing us. So be clear, black people are up against a very serious state of emergency and having a new president is not going to change that overnight. We are living through multiple pandemics at once and this has been our condition for over 400 years since we were trafficked to this country. There is a misconception that because we helped to get President Joe Biden elected, that somehow we believe that the last president was the state of emergency all by himself. Let's talk about that. We traveled across this nation from North Carolina to Michigan to Pennsylvania to Ohio to Alabama to Florida and to Georgia twice, not because the previous president was the uh, threat, the issue is the 75 million people that follow that president. They are the threat. 
and we could not reward them and allow them to maintain control over this country. We had to make a change. And because we had to be able to hold responsible those that were elected to our communities, to black and brown people who actually put them in office. We went into communities where there are people who are considered to be low propensity voters. These are those that they say won't vote anyway, and therefore the major organizations with the big budgets don't spend time in those communities knocking on doors. We went to those neighborhoods because we believe that those are actually, that the people who live there, high potential voters. That they are the ones at the center of the issues and therefore they must lead the change that we seek for this nation. We chose those neighborhoods because those are our people. We knocked on the doors of our elders. We talked to our children. We went out and we spent time with Ray Ray and Keisha and collectively we said no more. No more will you continue to cast our communities aside. We will show you the power that is within our hands. We do have power, ladies and gentlemen, even though at times I know it doesn't feel like we do. We have power and the rest of the world knows it, but they count on us to forfeit that power at every single chance. No peace, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace, no justice, no peace. No justice. No peace. People are counting on us to return to our homes, to abandon this fight. And to be honest, it's not a judgment because Daily survival is a thing. It is very difficult to stay involved in a struggle for your basic human rights while also trying to pay rent, to take care of a sick child, to just live from day to day. But we cannot abandon the fight. We have come so close to a place that we can actually change this nation if we would only stay focused stay organized and collaborate with one another. That for me is the biggest point of the day that we must find ways to work within our community even when we don't like one another. Because the love for freedom must be stronger than the hate that we have for ourselves. In fact, the idea that we are constantly fighting for freedom and equity is actually criminal. We should be able to select individuals who uphold fairness in this country, but we cannot. We must only depend on ourselves in this moment to stay on the battlefield and ensure that no one is able to forget who put them where they are. They don't get to just give us nice words and pleasantries. We want policy. We want action. It does not matter who presides over this nation if there is no commitment not to just reform, but to overhaul the systems. Because our systems operate from an old and racist book of procedures. They were designed to protect white men and by extension, white women. These systems were never designed to protect the black man and woman. Therefore, any administration that claims to love black people, especially black people who literally carry them on their backs, must be in the business of tearing down the old and building something new. President Biden and Vice President Harris and Secretary Rice, I am speaking directly to you all today. The executive orders that have been previously signed since you all took office are great. We support them. But we also need specific action that will address the needs of the black community and we need it now. We do not need more studies. So many have been done. What we need is action and you all who have been in office for far too long know exactly the needs. Let's not play with ourselves. Let's move forward swiftly and with courageousness because we know that it is not politically expedient to help free black people.
but yet it is something that must be done if you are to uphold what you promised, which is to stand up for the downtrodden and to unify. You cannot unify a country that is still riddled with oppression and suffering. So we need specific action that addresses mass incarceration, police accountability, poverty, housing, gun violence, and yes, reparations. Black people are owed reparations. It is time that this country stop evading its responsibility to take care of those who actually built the America that we all call home. President Biden, we need a pandemic for the pandemic. And while we definitely want our 100 Harriet Tubmans, the new $20 bill that you all seem to be so proud of, what is more important to our communities is that we receive the freedom that Harriet Tubman was fighting for. Thank you.